Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad with 52 Cards here. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you a legendary move in card magic and sleight of hand. It's uh, the Zaro Shuffle, arguably one of the greatest false shuffles ever devised, created by Herb Zaro, hence the name. Uh, it was originally published many, many years ago. Since then, a ton of different people have worked on it. It's quite an advanced move. You know, it's one of those things that you can practice for years and years and years and continually get better at it. So if you want to take this move seriously and get really good at it, I highly recommend that you consider this video right here an entry point and uh, continue you know, learning about it by seeking other sources as well. That's really going to help you out. Okay, I actually already made a tutorial for this move, you know, like five years ago or something when I first started the channel. It was one of the first videos I ever made. Um, but going back and looking at it, honestly, when I look at the early days of 52 cards of those videos, I'm a little bit embarrassed. The production quality, not so good. I was using um, one of those flip cameras. I don't know if you remember those, but it's just really bad audio, really bad video. And I think I've developed as a teacher quite a bit since then as well. So I feel like this is a move that definitely deserves a really high quality tutorial. So hopefully that's what this is going to be. Uh, so yeah, that's enough of an introduction for now. Let's go behind the card table and I'll teach you a few things about the Zara Shuffle. By the way, if you're really into this kind of stuff, intermediate to advanced level sleight of hand technique and card magic, there's two brand new projects coming from 52 Cards next month. Okay, so I'll make a separate video giving you the full context and details on what that's all about. Just giving you a little tease for now. I will drop some links down below in case you want to get a little bit more information about it. But um, you can look forward to that. And uh, let's now officially get into the tutorial. First, I'll give you just a brief overview of the principle that's being used in the shuffle, and then I'll go into detail on how to do the shuffle in a very deceptive and convincing way, okay? So let me just give you an exposed view of what's actually happening here. I'm uh, shuffling the two halves together. Uh, it starts off as a completely normal shuffle, but here's what happens next. I'm secretly dislocating the two halves. Here's an exposed view. I'm dislocating the two halves, and then essentially I'm just pushing two blocks of cards together. Okay, now there's actually two versions of the shuffle. One uses a slip cut and the other does not. I'll first show you the version that doesn't use a slip cut. And in that case, you actually have to do two shuffles in a row. So the first time you push the two halves together, I'm keeping a little break with my thumb here. And then I'm doing a second shuffle immediately afterwards. Same exact motion. And after doing those two shuffles, uh, the deck hasn't changed order at all. Okay, not a single card has moved. Uh, so let's go into detail on that and then towards the end of this video I'll show you the slip cut version where you only have to do one shuffle in order to keep the deck in complete order. Alright, so let's examine this a little bit more carefully now. So before you learn the Zara Shuffle, you do have to be very comfortable with just a standard tabled riffle shuffle. That's what you're simulating here. And from the spectator's point of view, it's going to look exactly the same, but uh, you know, behind the scenes there's some secret stuff going on. So let's get into some details here. You're going to break the cards in half. I'm taking the top half to the left, about an equal number of cards in each half, uh, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. You're gonna start off by shuffling a bed of cards from your left hand half. So maybe five to 10 cards, something like that. That's gonna make the next step a little bit easier. And uh, then you just finish the shuffle as you normally would. Uh, but you wanna make sure that you start, or you end, excuse me, you end with a single card from the left hand half on top. Okay, so up until now, it's for the most part a completely normal shuffle. Here's the, the, the move, okay? What happens next is with the tip of my first fingers on each hand, I'm gonna be pushing over the top card of each half just a little bit. In the beginning, maybe you'll wanna do a lot, just, you know, just so you can get accustomed to the motion. But when, you know, once you've practiced, you only need to push it over a little bit. That provides cover for the dislocation. So after you've done that, you know, when you do a riffle shuffle, you're shuffling the back corners and the deck you know, the two halves are usually at an angle like this. To do the dislocation, after you push over the top two cards, all I'm doing is really just straightening out the deck so that the two halves are now parallel to one another. And if you look at this angle, what happens is the cards kind of just unweave and break apart, okay? But, you know, that can't be seen because of the cover. 
from here, what's happening is with my right hand, I'm just lifting that right hand packet up into the point where the bottom card of that right hand half clears the top card of the left hand half underneath the cover of the top card. Once that happens, I'm just coalescing the two packets together. And, uh, and then I'm keeping a break in between the two. Okay, now we'll go into some finer details in a second about how to push those halves together in kind of a convincing way and an adaptive way. But uh, follow along with me while we go over some of the basics there. Once you have that break, you're just gonna do the same thing again. You break the two halves at the break, same exact shuffle and boom. Now let's talk about, at that point, you know, you don't have to hold a break after the second shuffle. At that point, you're done. Let's go into more detail on the pushing together of the two halves, because that's the key moment in this move. And if you don't do that properly, if you don't do that right, it just, this move doesn't look good at all, okay? Uh, I strongly advise you practice with a mirror. So get a mirror in front of you, just so you can see exactly what it looks like from the spectator's point of view. But here's a few tips to help you along the way. So once you've done the shuffle, the fingers at the front of the deck play a key role in covering the squaring up motion, okay? Because if you do it with your fingers wide open or whatnot, they might be able to see that you're just pushing over two halves together, okay? So you need to make sure that you're covering the sensitive areas with your first fingers at the front, um, or not first fingers, but you know, the, the fingers at the front, I should say. So you break the cards in half, and at this point, you wanna also make sure that you're not lifting too much. You wanna lift the just enough to create clearance. But if you're going too far, if this card kind of lifts too much or there's an opening that can be seen at the front of the deck, it destroys the illusion, okay? It's no good. So you wanna practice this to the point where you can just do it just barely enough to um, clear. And then from there, like one thing that I like to do is with my first finger, my left first finger, I'm kind of pushing down on this card a bit just to keep things kind of tidy and intact. I'm doing the same thing here. And then these fingers, uh, in front of both halves are kind of covering a lot of the squaring up motion. So I'll push the two together. And then once I'm right about here, at this point, I'll, re uh, I'll rearrange my right hand and kind of do the squaring up motion like this. And I find that's helpful, okay? Now make sure if you're, if you're doing the first of the two shovels, then you do need to keep that break um, between the two halves. I wanna give you a better look at the squaring up motion from the perspective of a spectator. So uh, I'm just gonna do it a bunch of times and pay attention to kind of the rhythm and the speed that I'm doing that at. And then also, you know, how I'm positioning my fingers at the front to cover a certain aspects of the shuffle. So I'm just gonna do it a bunch of times and pay attention. I'll do another series of shuffles for you from this over the shoulder angle just to give you a better look. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that pinkies play a key role in the squaring up motion. Okay, when you're at this point in the shuffle, it's really the pinkies, the, the right pinky on the right end of this packet and the left pinky on the left end of this packet that are pushing the two packets towards each other to complete the squaring. Okay, and then if you want, you can kind of bring your hand uh, across to finish the squaring motion, but even that isn't absolutely necessary. So uh, pay attention to the pinkies and you know the rest of the details as I do a handful of shuffles for you. Here we go. I'm not holding a break, by the way, between these shuffles right now. I'm just kind of doing it just so you can learn the squaring motion. Um, but if you were to actually do this in practice, you would want to hold a break between uh, every other shuffle that you're doing. And uh, after these shuffles, I will show you the method that uses the slip cut that doesn't require you to hold a break at all. So I'll get into that next, but take a look at these shuffles. Hopefully this kind of gives you a better idea. Uh, I'll try to do a few slowly for you. Kind of like that. You know, and then an actual speed once again. Oh, that was a bad example right there. An actual speed, something like that. Okay, let's get into the, the slip cut version because that's a really interesting method as well. And um, it's maybe a little bit more efficient in that you only need to do one shuffle. So the key differences in the slip cut version is instead of carrying the top half to the left, you're gonna be sliding the, the bottom half to the left, but you're just dragging along the topmost card with you in slip cut fashion. Then you do the shuffle and then the squaring up motion, everything else is the same and you conclude right there and uh, the deck is in full order.
So those are some tips for you on the Zara Shuffle. Once again, if you really want to learn this well, I advise you to seek out some other resources to help you, uh, you know, further your practice into this move. But uh, hopefully this is a good start for you. Feel free, as always, to let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. If you'd like this video, please do give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button, and check out 52cards.com if you're interested in learning more sleight of hand technique and card magic and all that good stuff. All right, guys. See ya.